So today I'm going to be doing a quick overview of the Pine Time running Wasp OS. Um, recently, the InfiniTime software for the Pine Time had a new release of 1.0 RC, um, which um, I have not gotten yet to making a video about, but I will be doing that after this one. Um, as I wanted to make a video showcasing Wasp OS, which I already have been running on my watch for a while. So that way it can be compared by you guys to InfiniTime in the other video that I'll be making. Um, so the this is the Pine Time that I'm holding in case you don't know what that is. It's a $25 smartwatch from Pine64. It has um, a heart rate sensor. It has a color display, a small one, but it's still color. It's also glass, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's got a side button here. And it's got a magnetic charging base. It is a sealed watch, so you could actually go swimming with this or wash your hands or take a shower or whatever, and you don't have to worry about it getting damaged. Um, that does mean you can't open it really to repair it, as far as I know. I mean, maybe you could dissolve the glue that's holding it together. But um, I don't really mind that personally. I mean, it's really cheap. And the other thing is that it is also um, a really good watch. So I think the fact that it's good and cheap makes up for the fact that you can't repair it really. Um, Unlike Apple Watches and such, which, you know, you're locked to the one OS that Apple gives you and that's it. And, of course, they don't have the benefit of privacy. They collect all the data off your watch. Um, so this watch here, it's running fully open source software. So it's not tracking you or doing anything spooky with your data. And um, you can actually write code for this watch and upload it wirelessly to it and run your own applications or whatever. There's multiple, um, I guess you could say, operating systems or software that um, allows you to have different styles of interfaces and watch faces and different underlying technology too um, that gives you a different experience. So you have, it's like Linux distros. You have a choice in the matter of what you want to run on your watch and how you want to use your watch as well. Um, I've personally been using Wasp OS for a while because it's been the one that's been ready for so long. InfiniTime's only just recently been catching up in terms of feature set. Um, but I still think uh, it's got a few minor nicks in here and there. So if... Once Infinity Time stabilizes, I probably will be moving over to it. But for now, I, I have to say Wasp OS is quite a nice uh, watch interface. So the uh, side button here, it not only turns on and off the screen, it also allows you to interact with software. So I'm going to turn on the screen here. You press once. You got a little battery icon with Wasp OS the time um, in 24-hour uh, format. And then you got the date at the bottom. It's very straightforward. But if you swipe to the side, hold on, there we go, you get a pedometer, you swipe again, you get a stopwatch, you can turn those on and off by pressing the button. Um, you get a heart rate sensor, which it's on your skin, you let it sit for a se few seconds, it will track your heart rate, you can see the green light flashing trying to read my veins. I don't think uh, anyone should rely on this for medical reasons or anything like that. That's a general rule of thumb for any smartwatch, because the heart rate sensors are not perfect. Um, they're literally using light and other technologies to, well, this one is a really basic one, so it's only using light, but they they basically use light mostly to look at your skin, um, look through your skin and look at your veins and watch the blood flow, and, and that's how it tracks your pulse, basically. Um, but that's not very reliable, obviously. Um, if you, like, have it off, it still thinks you have a heart rate, even. It's just that... Um, it's not going to be accurate because the light's not obviously hitting your skin and ref reflecting back. Um, so you can see 55 beats here. That's obviously wrong, but it still came up with something. And it takes a long time, too, with this watch, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, maybe it could be fixed in software, um, but it is a cheap watch. So really, at the end of the day, I, I don't think that's a big issue to have a slow heart rate sensor. Because, first of all, they're not really reliable, like I said. And second of all, come on, I mean, it's $25. Um, so besides that, let's go over again. I haven't charged it up, so that's why it's a low battery right now. Um, I've been using this watch daily. Um, it's been a really nice watch. So besides that, I think that was the last thing, the heart rate sensor. But if you swipe down, um, you can get access to other features. So by default, Wasp OS now includes an alarm, um, which you can set a time. Oh, let's open that up. You can set a time, and then there's a little checkbox here. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera here. Um, you set the time by pressing these little buttons up and down, so 10.30 here, and then you toggle this checkbox to set the new time in, and you, as long as it's blue like that, that means it's set. And, it, and any time at 10.30, you know, it will go off. 
So it's actually really, really nice. It uses, it does not have a speaker, doesn't have a webcam or anything like that or microphone. It just has the um, heart rate sensor, touchscreen, um, a vibrator motor and accelerometer and slash pedometer. Um, so it can't like make an audible alarm, but it does uh, sit on your wrist and uses the vibrator motor to wake you up. And I think that's really, really nice. It's a nice backup, um, especially if you use Pine64's other device, the Pine phone as a daily driver, because that can be unreliable at times. So you know, having a more reliable watch with you would be really nice to wake you up. Um, so you don't miss a meeting or you get up early and do stuff, whatever. Um, so besides that, the it, it has more features than just, a, you know, the alarm, obviously. Um, it has the settings here. You could change a few settings, like the brightness of this display up and down. Um, and there's some other stuff like notifications. You can actually sync this to your phone and get notifications for... Um, like, well, control, first of all, you can control music, um, and then you can also get notifications from apps and stuff. I don't think phone calling it works yet, at least it hasn't for me, but um, you can now get an app and uh, from a pull request on GitHub, and you can uh, compile that and install that to your watch, and you can get phone calls then, like notifications for phone calls, which is quite nice. Um... This is the software tab. They added this recently. It allows you to toggle on and off features of the watch. So you can see here, alarm is already by default toggled on. Then you got the calculator. You got a chrono, um, which is a, a chrono, uh, chrono clock. Um, I'm not, it has like squares and stuff on. Let's toggle that on and show that. It's uh, an interesting clock to say the least. Yeah, so let's go back to the main screen and swipe down. Sometimes this can be unresponsive in Wasp OS. Um, the Pine Time itself isn't unresponsive. It's, it's just the software Wasp OS can be a little finicky at times. I don't mind that, though, because I really don't sit here interacting with the display all the time. Oh, there's one watch face I activated. Oh, I think that was the chrono. Yeah, that was the chrono. Okay, so this is an analog watch face here. You get the time ticking around. That's neat. I didn't I didn't remember about that. All right, let's disable that. There's uh, the Fib Fibonacci clock is what I was thinking of. Uh, that's the one with the squares and stuff. Um, then you got Game of Life. You've got a music player, which is what allows you to control your music on your phone. Um, I don't have this set up. I really don't use it. Um, it's just, yeah. I mean, I don't listen to music on my phone, really. Uh, although, you can use KDE Connect on your phone. And when you have it paired up, with your, your Pine Time paired with your phone, and KDE Connect paired with your computer... What will happen is this will actually control your desktop computer's music or your laptop's computer's music. It's actually really, really neat. Um, I find that handy, though, um, but I don't really use that either. I don't listen to a lot of music uh, frequently. So let's go down and show more what's here. So you got 2048, a snake game, and then a torch, which I have to say the torch feature is really, really nice. Um, it's a very basic feature, but I, I, I love it. So in the dark, if you're walking along... Um, and you can't see where you're going, you'll stub your toe, right? Um, usually, like, you need to go to the bathroom at night after waking up. Well, this torch mode turns the screen white and puts up the brightness of the display all the way up. It's not very bright at all, but you can see there's some light reflecting onto the keyboard there. It's just enough that during pitch black, you could see a lot. Um, it highlights your environment, and you can see quite a bit with it. It's very, very handy. Um, it doesn't really seem to drain the battery that fast, so it's actually quite a nice feature overall. Um... So this watch definitely isn't advanced or anything. It's not an Apple watch for sure, but it, it looks pretty decent. It's not too big. It's not too raggy looking. It actually looks pretty nice. It's waterproof. It's got the vibrator motor so it can wake you up or notify you of notifications. It's got a decent display, and it, it feels nice. It's got aluminum um, siding here. This, the whole side of the case is aluminum. It's got a interchangeable 25 millimeter watch band system, so... You can see here, uh, the watch bands are, oop, almost blinded myself there with that stupid, I'm going to turn off the display and hold the my finger over the fingerprint sensor there, but it's got standardized watch uh, bands, so that way you could take this pin here, let's see if I could do that on camera, you can take that pin and push it down and out, and you can pull off the watch band, and you can put in a, a different 25 millimeter watch band, it's standardized size, and voila, you have interchangeable um, wristbands. It's actually really, really neat. Um, let's get that on. Got to get that back in.
Uh, is it going to go in? There we go. I had to push down on the pin. All right, now it's back to normal. So that was pretty much everything what WaspOS has to offer at the moment. There is, like I said, there's some pull requests that uh, you can put, compile and put on here. They're not merged yet, so they're not going to be in the software um, software tool here that allows you to enable software. That's what happens is when something gets merged, usually it, um, it gets put into the firmware, deactivated by default, and all you have to do is go into this, the software uh, setting tool here and just enable it, and voila, it works on your watch, at least until the battery dies, because when the battery dies, it resets, and you have to um, resync it to your phone and also uh, um, use this uh, uh, tool again to re-enable it. Now, one thing that's neat about WaspOS, I can't show you because I'm using my phone to record its camera. Um, it, uh, like I said, it syncs to your phone. So um, you can either sync it to your phone and get notifications and, and update the time, or you can actually use your um, laptop or desktop or whatever, even like a Pine phone or, or Pinebook Pro if you wanted, and you can run a Wasp tool, which comes with the WaspOS when you compile it. Um, and it allows you to sync the real-time clock over Bluetooth with your desktop or laptop real quick, and then it just keeps track of time on its own. You don't have to worry about anything, and you can set notifications still and everything. It just works, right? Um, and the other thing is you can also upload firmware files and other stuff to it, so you can write apps and then upload them and then enable them on the watch itself using um, this tool if you... Um, yeah. I think so. I, I th actually, I think I got that mixed up. Uh, I think you have, if you want to use that tool there, this is only for frozen apps in the firmware. But yeah, you could send over the WaspOS tool a firmware file, a, P a Python file, basically. And because WaspOS is written in Python, MicroPython, to be specific. And you could send it over the Bluetooth tool and uh, test it on your watch. And then when you reboot, it's back to normal. It, like, resets the firmware because it's only temporarily in memory. It's actually really neat. And it makes for quite a convenient um, development uh, environment. Not that I've I've really only tinkered a long time ago with this, so I'm I'm not really familiar with it 100%. But um, it sounds like it would be a really nice uh, development environment if you're interested in making your own wa um, watch apps. Um, so WaspOS has a lot of potential. I don't think it's perfect by any means. I mean, you saw how sometimes I was having trouble and with swiping through, and sometimes it takes a while to to load a um, an image on the display, right? Uh, update the screen. But overall, it, it's not bad. It, it's it's quite handy. It's functional. It The watch itself looks like the hardware that the WaspOS runs on. And um, the neat thing is, too, WaspOS is not limited to the Pine Time either. Um, it actually has ports to other devices. I'm not 100% sure what they are off the top of my head. Um, but you can look on the WaspOS documentation and see for yourself if you're interested. Um, I'm going to shortly be working on a video about... Um, Pine, the Pine Time again, but this time running InfiniTime. I'm going to flash that to my watch here and see how that goes. Um, the RC 1.0 release just came out, so that will be interesting to check out. It finally got um, the step uh, counter working, which WaspOS has had for a while, and um, it might have a alarm clock now, which if it does, I'm definitely going to look into switching over to it if it's reliable, um, but I'll showcase it in that video and see how that goes. So.